Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with another Feb Regency video and we are going to be talking about where I think you should start with Keats. So this is kind of rounding out my three days of where I think you should start uh, with different romantic poets. And Keats is the final of the three, mostly because Keats is the one that I feel the least well read in. Even though technically, if I was going to think in terms of the percentage of their oeuvre that I have read, I've probably read more of what Keats published in his lifetime than I have the other two. Though numbers wise, I think I've read more from Shelley. I say that because Keats was a very short lived individual and thus he did not write nearly as much as Byron or Shelley. Interestingly, all three of these men died very, very young, but Keats was the youngest of the three when he died, and he was also the first of the three to die. Keats had tuberculosis, which he struggled with the majority of his life, and that colors a lot of his work. So I would say Keats is very different from Shelley and Byron because Keats is often very directly discussing death and discussing history because he has one foot on the other side and he knows it from a very young age and I think it really colors his work. That is one thing about Keats that's interesting and so I often feel like I need to be in the right headspace to read him. He's very deep, very introspective, and he's trying to cram in a lot in a short period of time. I think statistically Keats is probably the most popular of these three today uh, and his poems on an individual basis are more famous than any of those by Byron or Shelley to me. When going into the romantics I had heard of Keats's poetry more than I had heard of anything from Shelley or Byron and so I think that's really interesting. I think he has a lot of staying power even though objectively he had a much shorter career and published far less than the other two. For example, this collection from Oxford is basically half poetry, half of his letters. Uh, and so I think that's really interesting. I don't think this collection does include everything that he wrote in terms of poetry, but it includes one of his longer works in totality, and it also includes a bunch of his letters. But on the whole, it's a shorter book, it's a shorter edition than my editions of Percy Shelley or of Lord Byron. To say all of that, Keats also was far more interested in shorter poetry than Shelley or Byron appeared to be. And so I think you could really open the door and start anywhere with Keats. I think he's very inviting. Again, I think it all depends on what you want out of this experience. I think there are broader themes for each poet's career. And for Keats, one of these broader themes is definitely history and literature. Keats has always read to me as somebody who you would find in your college's history department. And so I've always really liked him personally because that's a lot of what he's commenting on uh, in his poetry. He's also really interested in Greek mythology. So I think there's a really timeless quality to his writing because he was always writing about something that was already famous. I think Shelley and Byron were often commenting on current events, which means that some of their poetry is just not as relevant to us today, whereas Keats is always living in the past. And so he's always dealing with kind of classic ideas, which makes him as relevant today as he was at the time in which he was writing. Whereas with Shelley and Byron, I really did start chronologically and I intended to keep it that way. With Keats, I dove in on the odes because the odes are the ones that are the most famous in my opinion. And they are easily some of the best places to start. I feel like with Shelley and Byron, I told you not to start where I started because I think I made mistakes. I didn't make a mistake here with Keats. So the odes are some of Keats's most famous poems. There is Ode on a Grecian Urn, Ode to a Nightingale, I think those are the two most famous. Ode on a Grecian Urn is one of my all-time faves, but my favorite of the odes is Ode on Melancholy, which is a deeply, deeply sad poem. And I have found that through doing these three videos, uh, I apparently am really into sad poetry. I don't know what that says about me, but this is a very sad poem where Keats is meditating on his apparent early death. And I think it is so, beautiful. Ode on a Grecian Urn is similarly beautiful and is also Keats interacting with the past. I would say that's probably my second favorite, 
Ode to a Nightingale is one I'll say fully I did not get when I first read it. Uh, that's kind of my controversial opinion. I think that's probably the most famous of the odes and it's the one that people I think come across the most frequently in school, but it's not the one that connected with me. All of the odes are relatively short, and so I think you could start with any of them and you could get a good handle on what Keats is interested in. He wears his heart on his sleeve and he definitely has his sentimental favorites. He has his fixations. And so those show up time and again in his poetry. And so I think the odes are a good entry point because not only are they short, not only are they going to tell you if you like the way that he writes, but they're also gonna tell you something about him and the things that he's interested in. And that's why I love the romantics. It's not so much that the poetry itself is gorgeous and enjoyable to read, though it is. It's that I feel like they themselves are very present in their work. And so it often feels like you're really having a conversation with someone when you are annotating their poetry or when you're just reading it aloud. Keats can feel a little bit more personal than the other two in an uncomfortable way, if that makes sense. Because I think Shelley is very, very present, but he's political. He's arguing. He wants to talk to you. It's like you're at a salon. Uh, Lord Byron is like you're at a party and you're going, Hey, hey, did you hear about this? Did you hear about this? Lord Byron's kind of tapping you on the shoulder and constantly gossiping. Keats is like someone who overshares at the party and you don't know him particularly well and he's just going on and telling you all of his health problems and everything he's been through in life and you're thinking, I don't even know you. We didn't even say, how are you? What's the weather like? Keats is just telling you everything about him. And so I think his poetry can be kind of uncomfortable because I feel like I'm getting too much too quickly. And so maybe don't start with Ode on Melancholy because that's definitely, definitely the more personal of the Odes. But I think the other Odes are ideal places to start. One of the first things that I also read by Keats was on looking into Chapman's Homer, which is him reflecting on a translation of Homer that was from, I think, the late 1500s, early 1600s. And for Keats, this was a lightning strike moment when he read this translation, when he was exposed to Homer. This poem is gorgeous. It's like literally being exposed to a new universe, like going to a new planet for Keats. And I just think it's dreamy, all of the imagery that he uses. Keats was such a nerd in the best way possible. I mean, such a nerd in the best way possible. I feel like of the three, were we just to meet Shelley Byron Keats, Keats and I have a lot to talk about, a lot to talk about, and a lot in common. Uh, and that's one thing that I really appreciate about Keats. On the opposite end of Keats oversharing in a way that sometimes makes me uncomfortable, Keats does share personal detail in a way that I just think is wonderful because it feels like you're sitting down with a friend and he is telling you what he's currently interested in. And so Keats is friendly in a way that Shelley and Byron are not. This is a great place to start, particularly if you were also a big fan of Homer, if you're a big fan of the classics. And I think in general, if you're just someone who loves classic literature, you're going to love Keats because he also loved it. And one of my favorite things by him is actually not his poetry, but he often would write meditations on Shakespeare, on Milton, and he would write in the margins of his copies of their poetry or of their plays and he would just write his observations in it. And this edition by Oxford includes that, includes some of the notes that he made on those stanzas in this. And I think that's really wonderful. I love that. That's actually some of my favorite writing by Keats is actually not something that he ever intended to be published. It was just personal notes that he made for himself. And so that's why we should all annotate. One day it might be interesting to somebody. What you write in the margins might be interesting to somebody. But I think it's interesting to watch clearly a great mind, a great poet, dissect someone else who is a great poet. My personal favorite by Keats is a long poem. That's coming as a surprise to absolutely no one. I love long poetry. And so my favorite by him is Endymion. And Endymion is kind of a retelling of a Greek myth. Endymion is a figure in Greek myth who is a shepherd who falls in love with Selene, the moon goddess. And so this is one of the poems of Keats's that focuses primarily on Greek mythology, but this is really dreamy. It's got a lot of nature imagery, which is a wider theme in romanticism, kind of this focus on nature. And I love it, love it.
It is very long, so I would say it is probably not the ideal place to start, but I think when you work yourself up to it, it's a great reward for reading all of his other shorter works. I certainly didn't start here. I worked my way up to this, and I did feel like I was getting rewarded by it just because I really like longer poetry more than shorter poetry. But what's interesting is I would say Keats probably packs in more thematically in his shorter poetry than he does in longer works like this. And so again, this kind of depends on you and what you like about poetry, what you want to get from it. Because if you are looking for something to really discuss, if you're looking to write your dissertation on something, weirdly enough, you're not going to get more out of a longer poem of Keats's than you would a shorter one. He packs a punch in a very short amount of time, whereas I would say Shelley and Byron are giving you more the longer they talk. Endymion feels very personal for Keats, just something that he really wanted to write, maybe even for fun. And there's just a really dreamy, hazy, fantasy-like quality to it that I really love. If you love something like The Fairy Queen by Spencer, you would love Endymion. You would love it. It's so gorgeous, so dreamy, so beautiful. And now that I'm talking about it, when I finish filming this, I'm going to reread it. I also love from Keats, On Some Skulls in Bowley Abbey near Inverness. It's very gothic. It is, of course, about skulls uh, that he saw in Scotland. This is a little bit of a longer poem. While still short, it's a couple of pages long. And I think it is very gothic. And I think that's interesting. That's not something that I've really discussed much in these three videos is just kind of the interaction of the Gothic with Romanticism. Uh, and it's not always present. It's not always in the forefront of a lot of the poetry of the period. This is one of the interesting cases where it is. It is certainly not a poem of Keats's that gets talked about very much, but I really enjoy it. I think it is a good stepping stone for him. I think it is a place that you could start. But essentially, I think you could start anywhere with Keats. I think if you were interested in nature writing, he has so many great, wonderful poems that are about nature. If you were interested in commentary on other literature, he has so many great poems on that. He has a really great poem about when he revisited King Lear, when he reread King Lear. That's one of my favorites of his. And so he really has a lot of poems on different topics. And depending on what you're interested in, I think you could start anywhere with him. But I do truly think the odes are the best place to start for Keats in terms of his poetry. Now, Keats also wrote prose. Primarily, he wrote letters. And weirdly enough, the majority of his letters are very well preserved because Fanny Braun, who was a girl who he was in love with, she kept all of his letters. And this is kind of a standout for the period and a standout among the three poets that I have talked about over the past couple of days. Lord Byron's letters remain, but a lot of his stuff has been scrubbed to make him kind of seem a little bit cleaned up. Shelley also similarly went through something where kind of he was cleaned up in retrospect. But Keats really was well documented and letters on both sides were preserved. And I personally have gotten a lot out of his letters and maybe more out of his letters than I have his poetry. I think his letters are supremely beautiful. They are almost literature in their own right. Certainly he was writing his letters never with the intent to see them published, to see a wider audience read them, but they still read like incredible literature. If you're interested in Keats as a person, not just as a poet, I think you should definitely read his letters. They are also very sad. And I would just say on the whole, read Keats when you're in a very happy mood, when it's sunny outside. I think he is one of the more melancholy poets. And I sometimes feel even in relatively happy poetry from him, I feel heavy after reading him. And so I have to be in the right headspace. But a lot of his poetry is really beautiful. Keats is definitely the most popular of the three today. And I think there's a reason for that. That was where I think you should start with Keats. I would love to know down below if you have read any of the ones uh, that I mentioned today. I would love to know your favorites from him. But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.